Hi, this is Dr. Ramon Rodriguez and welcome back to the Parkinson's Doctor channel. Today I will be discussing the topic of drooling, drooling in Parkinson's disease. And drooling might seem like something simple, something that uh, should not be a reason of concern. However, let me tell you that this is actually a big deal in the Parkinson's disease community and it is a big deal because when patients are drooling, this might be uh, a cause of social isolation. Some people might have excoriation and, and even infections as a result of that. And, uh, and, and probably the most important one is that this is a cause of embarrassment. Many people uh, might, might decide not to be going out, avoid going to church, avoid uh, spending time with their family members because they are having issues with drooling. And the truth is that there is something that we can do. We just need to have the conversation with uh, the doctor to make sure that we, we find the right treatment for the patient. So in first place, what I'm going to do is just establish our topic for the day, right? So that would be drooling. And uh, drooling is basically excessive salivation. And, and this happens in Parkinson's disease quite frequently because the mechanism for swallowing might not be working uh, perfectly. And, and as a result, people will have some drooling. So what can we do about it, right? So the, the main goal is to try to decrease the amount of uh, saliva that the patient is producing. And as a result, we are going to decrease the, uh, uh, the, the problem of drooling. So in first place, what I like to do is actually refer my patient to a speech and swallow therapist. This will be something simple, no medications are involved. So I'm just gonna write here, you know, the, the first option, uh, speech and swallow therapist. And after multiple uh, therapy sessions, uh, the, the therapist might help improve the, the swallowing mechanism uh, for the patient and that might be able to take care of the problem. So, so that would be the end of it. No medications are needed. However, we're going to see quite a large number of patients that might be resistant to uh, uh, the, the therapy with the speech therapies. And in that case, you know, the natural reaction is to think about maybe taking a medication, right? So when we speak about medications to treat drooling, we're talking about anticholinergics. And i just go ahead and write this here, right? Anticholinergics. And there are uh, three main medicines that are used in this case. So uh, number one is uh, trihexyphenidyl. Let me write this here for you to have this information. Uh, the other medication is called benztropin. And the last medication is called glycopyrrolate. Glycopyrrolate, okay. So, there is an issue with these therapies, right? And the problem is that the use of anticholinergics in the Parkinson's disease patient might end up inducing hallucinations, delusions, memory problems, cognitive impairment, some people might have blur vision. Some people would have bladder retention. And to me, this is a really big price to pay trying to improve the symptoms of drooling. And, and, and the problem is that these side effects are very common. Many times when we prescribe the medicine, you know, you, you read the, the list of possible side effects and, and those are possible, right? You know, they're not that common. Otherwise, the FDA might not have approved that medicine. However, in the case of Parkinson's disease and the use of anticholinergics, the probability of having any of these side effects is actually very high. So in my practice, I, I stay away from these medicines. And this can be the, the natural reactions uh, for most of the uh, medical community to try one of these medicines, not understanding that People with Parkinson's disease are more sensitive, their brains are more sensitive because of the Parkinson's disease, and the use of these medications might not be the best option. So the question is, what can we do then? So in my practice, my preference is to treat patients with botulinum toxins, and let me go ahead and write that down here. So we have uh, 
botulinum toxins. And there are two uh, medications that I like to use in particular. Uh, the number one is called uh, myoblock, and the other one that I use is called uh, zeomine. And these medicines are both approved by the FDA, and actually they are covered by medical insurance. All we have to do is submit the proper documentation explaining why we want to do this procedure, what is the impact that uh, the drooling is having on the patient, and I have to tell you that most, most you know, more often than not, uh, insurance will end up paying this medicine. So it is very critical that you understand that when people are dealing with drooling, there is something that can be done. And the first thing that needs to happen is, number one, you need to talk to the doctor. You know, when, when you sit down with your doctor, it is critical for you to write down all the issues that uh, the person with Parkinson's disease is, is struggling with at home to make sure that you don't forget about them, right? Because when you sit there, it is very easy for, for memory to, to, to fail. It can happen to any of us. So just mention to the doctor, doctor, you know, my, my, my dad, my, my mom, or, or myself, I'm having a problem with drooling, and I would like to know what options are available for you to help me with this uh, condition. And at that time, you might be able to, uh, to engage in a conversation of, let's try the referral to speech and solo therapies. Let's try that for four to six weeks, see how it works. If it doesn't help, then in my impression, we should immediately jump into botulinum toxins, avoid the anticholinergic. So for that reason, I'm just going to make an X here, right? And, and, and the reason is that I really uh, do not think that people with Parkinson's disease should be taking any of these medicines. And the use of botulinum toxins, most time covered by, by insurance, uh, is likely the best option. So... I, I hope that you have learned something on this uh, short video. Uh, understand that drooling really has a big impact in people with Parkinson's disease, social isolation that leads to uh, depression, embarrassment. Uh, some people might have uh, excoriation and infections. And there is something that can be done, and the treatment is actually uh, uh, quite effective. Uh, when we speak about botulinum toxin, we do injections in the uh, parotid glands and the submandibular glands. And the benefit will last for about three months. So the person with Parkinson's disease will be coming every every three months uh, to receive their, their injections and consistently this uh, therapy continues working. I really hope that uh, you find this medication to be useful. And uh, if you want to uh, have information uh, up to date, as soon as it is published, my recommendation is to subscribe to the Parkinson's Doctor channel. Thank you very much and until the next video.